Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. Scotland, your English teacher. We just got done reading the Odyssey by Homer and a bunch of other Greek poets too. Wasn't it a great journey? We got to learn all about how Odysseus took 10 years to get home after spending 10 years in the Trojan War. He really wanted to get back to his queen Penelope. In summation, there were some islands with goddesses. He stabbed a cyclops right in the eyeball. Some drugs were involved, somebody killed some cows, a really big bag of wind got left open, and when he got home, he cut off the genitals of the sky and fed them to dogs. The end. It was a great story. If you want to know more about it, you can watch my video here on YouTube. Or listen to the song on iTunes. Anyhow, we're not done with our journey yet. There's still just one more journey to go. Today, I'm going to teach you all about the 12 stages of the hero. And it starts with a good friend of mine who I've never met before, and he wrote a book. His name is Joseph Campbell, and the book is called A Hero with a Thousand Faces. you about the 12 stages of the hero's journey, we're going to use one of my all-time favorite movies ever, Pitch Perfect. Ha! <laughs> no. Talk about Star Wars Episode 4, New Hope. Get it through your skull. It's amazing. But before we learn about the 12 stages, let me give you a little history about Joseph Campbell. You see, Joseph Campbell traveled all over the world, and he heard myths from various cultures. And what he discovered was that these myths, whether they were myths in Japan or in Egypt, were bound together by common threads. And these myths are in fact a reflection of our psychological development. Not only that, but the mythology that we hear in different cultures resonates with us no matter what because it contains the same basic principles. And that's what we're here to learn about today, those fundamental principles. The 12 stages of the hero's journey through Star Wars. If you haven't seen Star Wars, don't worry. I'll give you a quick synopsis to catch you up so that you're not totally lost. Uh, but what you need to take away from this, if you were to take away one thing, and you'll take away more than one thing, I promise you, but if you took away one thing from this, uh, it would be watch episodes four, five, and six first. Then, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could watch episodes one, two, and three. But if you don't, no big deal. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but trust me. Anybody over the age of 30 would agree with me. But we're only going to focus on Episode 4, A New Hope. And this is what Episode 4, New Hope, is about. Okay, so it starts, there's this ship flying over this planet. And then a bigger ship comes along and catches a smaller ship. And on the big ship is this guy, and he's dressed all in black. His name's Darth Vader. And he talks funny while he breathes, which is like a weird thing to do. But he can breathe and talk at the same time. He's like... Where are the plans for the Rebel Alliance? And then Princess Leia, she was on the smaller ship. She's like, I don't know what plans you're talking about. That is a lie. And it's true. She is lying. She is lying. She knows where those plans are because she put them on these two droids. Uh, a droid is like a robot. But it's like a robot that can think for itself. One of them's name is R2-D2 and one is C-3PO. So like android but minus the ant. But the little one, R2-D2, he's like a little trash can. Okay, anyways, there's two droids go down to the planet uh, and they escape and Luke Skywalker and his uncle they buy him okay so uh, Luke is like this whiny teenager and he lives with his aunt and uncle on a moisture farm so you know you have it tough when you have to farm for water they buy R2-D2 and C-3PO and then Luke is like cleaning R2-D2 and then R2-D2 shows this image and it's Princess Leia and she's like help me Obi-Wan Kenobi you're my only help 
Luke's like, oh my gosh, who is she? She's beautiful. And then R2-D2 runs away, and then uh, Luke runs into this old guy, and the old guy saves him. This old guy's name is Ben Kenobi slash Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan like listens, he's like, Luke, let me teach you about the Force. And Luke's like, what's the Force? And then Obi-Wan's like, it surrounds us, binds us, penetrates us. And Luke's like, oh. And then Obi-Wan's like, let me show you a lightsaber. And Luke's like, you know what? I think I need to get back to the farm. But it turns out his aunt and uncle have been shot and killed. And their bodies are still burning. And Luke's like, okay, old man, I guess I will go with you. And the old man's like, all right, great. We're going to go to this bar. Which would make sense. His parents just died. And they meet this guy. It's Han Solo. Flies this ship. It's called the Millennium Falcon. And he has this co-pilot named Chewbacca. But he doesn't make those faces. He looks like a, like a dog. Like a dog on like a tall dog like like seven foot two like super tall this shit's fast enough so then they all get on the ship and they blast off and they go into space and then they find the death star and then they rescue the princess and then they leave the death star and then they blow it up the end Stage number one of the hero's journey is introduction to the hero and their ordinary world. Now, it's really important we meet the hero in their ordinary world because then we wouldn't really understand how difficult, like, the non-ordinary world that they go to is. So, you know, you want to understand the challenges the hero has to face, but first you got to see him in, like, normal life. So, in Star Wars Episode IV, uh, Luke Skywalker lives on a desert planet, and he farms water, and like, that's what he does. That's his ordinary world. It's a planet, it's a desert, he farms water, it's like a low-key life, he's with his aunt and uncle, uh, and there's two sons. So, that's his ordinary world, stage one. Stage two of the hero's journey is called the call to adventure. And it's at this point in the hero's journey uh, that somebody or something says, hey, we, there's, there's an adventure to go on, and we need to go do it. And this is your chance. This is your chance to say, yes, let's go. And so this happens in Star Wars Episode Four when Obi-Wan first says, you know, Luke, Learn let me teach you about the Force. Force. You know, let me show you what it's all about. Um, you can, like, do these things. You have these powers. I'll show you Father's lightsaber. Like, it'll be cool. Uh, and, and, you know, and that's Luke's first call to adventure. Okay, so that's stage two, the call to adventure. Stage three is called the reluctant hero. And uh, for most heroes, right, they go out, they have this call to adventure, but instead of taking it, uh, they either say no, they're like, no thanks, I'll pass on adventure today, or something gets in the way, they get denied. Uh, but ultimately, they do choose to accept. So Luke, as the reluctant hero, initially Obi-Wan's like, hey, you know, let me teach you the Force. Like, I can show you some things. And Luke's like, nah, you know what? I don't know, that sounds a little too crazy, like, I have it pretty good here, uh, you know, I don't pay rent, I live at home, I'm saving lots of money, and I'm with my aunt and uncle. Look, I can take you as far as Anchorhead. You can get a transport there to Mos Eisley or wherever you're going. You must do what you feel is right, of course. And so he says no to that at first. But then later on... After his uncle, uh, aunt and uncle are killed, he's like, okay, I think so. I think I should do this. I think I should go on this journey. I want to come with you to Alderaan. There's nothing for me here now. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. Okay, so the, you know, stage three is the reluctant hero, but then ultimately they do decide to go on the adventure. That's the thing that they do. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. Uh, uh, yeah. Ready? Woo. Uh, Let's go. Can I get an encore? Do you, you want more? Cook and roll with the okay. Brooklyn Stage four. Stage four is all about the mentor. Okay, and the mentor, pretty consistently, is either an old man or an old woman full of knowledge who comes the along force? to help guide the hero. The force is what gives the Jedi his power. 
It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. And uh, this mentor uh, guides a hero, you know, for a while on the journey. But what's really important to remember is that at some point, the mentor uh, either leaves, has to leave the hero, or has to leave the quest. Uh, and so the hero has to journey without the mentor at some point. Uh, and so the mentor for Luke Skywalker in episode four is the old man. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi knows the stuff. He knows his force. He's ready to teach him. Uh, and so, you know, ultimately, he becomes the mentor for Luke Skywalker. Stage five, the hero passes the threshold. Well, first of all, a threshold, it's like a doorway, right? A doorway is a threshold. And so uh, heroes cross over, uh, you know, through the quote-unquote door. And when they do that, their adventure begins. And so a threshold could be a doorway. It could be anything. It could be very symbolic. There's a point at which a hero crosses uh, from one part, you know, from the ordinary world into the extraordinary world. Right, and at that point, it's like there's no turning back. Like, you've gone, you're in there, you're in the new world, and you're going for it. So for Luke Skywalker, crossing the threshold is when he gets in the Millennium Falcon, piloted by Han Solo and Chewbacca, uh, and they take off into the sky, and they leave the plane of Tatooine. Right, and at that point, Luke has fully left the ordinary world, and he's gone into the extraordinary world. That's right, he's past the threshold. All right, step six in the hero's journey uh, sort of can take place, you know, over a long period of time. It's not just one specific moment. Uh, but basically, uh, several things happen in, in stage six. Number one, uh, the hero meets some allies, people that are going to help them on their way. Uh, the other thing that can happen is they meet some enemies. And uh, along with meeting allies and meeting enemies, there's some tests. The hero gets tested in certain ways. Can the hero do this? Can the hero do that? Can the hero survive? Uh, and of course, you know, for most heroes, the answer is yes. If you don't survive, uh, you messed up. So, uh, who are Luke's friends? Who are his allies? Right? Well, he meets Han Solo and Chewbacca. Right? They're helping him. Who are his enemies? It's Darth Vader. Darth Vader's out to get him. Darth Vader and his his stormtroopers. Right? And then the test that Luke fa uh, the test that Luke faces. And then the test that Luke faces, well, he has to start learning to use his powers. Uh, he has to shoot down some TIE fighters, right? And when he's able to do this, he's showing that he can be, he can be kind of a hero, right? And that's what it's all about. So stage six is uh, enemies and allies. Stage 7, Belly of the Whale. In Stage 7, the hero goes someplace dark, dangerous, where they're surrounded on all sides. And, uh, you know, it could be a cave, it could be the enemy's fortress, it could be anywhere in which uh, it's extremely dangerous, and, you know, there's a chance that they could die. Right? So, for Luke Skywalker, uh, in Episode 4, his Belly of the Whale, I mean, he literally goes into... Uh, the trash chute uh, of the Death Star. So, you know, if you think about your stomach, your stomach is a place where you, like, put all this stuff, and then there's, like, junk in there, right? Well, Luke Skywalker is literally in liquid, uh, surrounded by, you know, trash, and uh, that's his belly of the whale, right? Like, almost literally, he's, he's in a stomach. Uh, so, you know, stage seven. Belly of the Whale. Stage 8, Death and Rebirth, Part 1. Right In, in Stage 8, the hero was on the brink of death. In fact, most times, you know, as a viewer or a reader, you think the hero's dead. Right? They can't come back from that. They're completely gone, and then boom. Right? They either uh, come back from being almost dead, or they fight back, or they do something... To get back to the point where they're they're alive again and they're ready to go and they continue on their quest on their journey. So, 
you know, in, in episode four in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, he's in the belly of the whale, literally, literally, you know, in this water, and a monster grabs him, and it pulls Luke underwater, and, uh, you know, Han Solo and Princess Leia and Chewbacca, they're all there, and like, oh my gosh, where'd Luke go? Where'd he go? And Luke's underwater, and he's being held down there for a long time, and we don't know where he is, and Han Solo and Princess Leia and Chewbacca, they don't know, and it gets, like, really tense and quiet and, like, awkward. What happened to Luke? And then he's reborn. He comes, you know, screaming out of the water, gasping for breath. I would say sort of similar to a, a baby being born, you know, covered in, in uh, you know, covered in stuff, taken in air, kind of screaming, uh, and, you know, and he is literally reborn. Death and rebirth. Death and rebirth. Stage nine is called Object of the Quest. That's like one name you could give it. Object of the Quest. And and stage nine, the hero recovers whatever it is they're after. So, for example, uh, Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, he's after, you know, he's there to rescue Princess Leia. That's sort of his quest. His quest is to rescue Princess Leia and he's he's done that he's recovered he's recovered the the object of the quest and now it's time to escape right so stage 9 getting the object of the quest stage 10 is basically escape right most heroes they're out on a quest they're out there to get something they want to recover something and uh, once they've got that something then they have to leave they have to escape and it's a pretty pretty risky endeavor, right? Because their enemies now know that they have whatever the object is, object of their quest, and so they're after them. So in episode four, uh, Star Wars A New Hope, Luke Skywalker gets Princess Leia, right? But now he's got her. He's got to escape. So uh, for him, he, Han Solo, and Chewbacca all hop in the Millennium Falcon, and they take off. Right, and they've escaped with the object of the quest, but then they're pursued. They're pursued by these TIE fighters. Right, and if they get caught, they're going to be in big trouble. Uh, what's also important is that in this moment, if you think way back to stage three, learning about the mentor, right? Well, this is a part in the journey where Luke has to continue without Obi Wan Kenobi. Okay, spoiler alert: Darth Vader kills Obi Wan. No! Quite sad. So. Stage 10, escape. All right, stage 11. It's the second death and rebirth scene. Sometimes it's referred to as a resurrection. And it's another point in which the hero is on the brink of dying, even though uh, they've nearly accomplished their quest. And uh, you think, oh man, they're not going to make it. They were so close, right? But then, boom, they come back, they survive. Uh, maybe they sort of appear out of nowhere and they make it and they live and they go on and they're successful. So in Star Wars Episode 4, Luke escapes with Princess Leia and that's like, that's kind of a start as part of, you know, his quest, but then it turns out he has to help destroy the Death Star. And so remember, we sort of talked about that little uh, small area he has to shoot. Well, he's going down in the trenches to shoot it. He's in, he's in this thing called an X-Wing and he's going to fly it in there and shoot his proton torpedoes. But then Darth Vader's chasing after him. And right when it looks like Darth Vader's about to kill Luke, and you're like, oh, no, he's not going to make it. Han Solo comes out of nowhere. <laughs> right? Shoots Darth Vader. Darth Vader goes careening in space. You're like, oh, Luke made it. And then, you know, he shoots, shoots his weapons. So uh, stage 11, another death and rebirth scene, sometimes known as the Resurrection. Like we always do with this channel. You've been keeping track. We're almost there. Stage 12. Return to the ordinary world. So, in many instances, the hero has gotten whatever it is they're after, and now they're able to go back to the ordinary world, and go back to where they're from, and sort of celebrate, and live the good life, and like, yeah, I got the object of the quest. Ooh, ooh. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. But... Sometimes stage 12 is not just return to ordinary world. Sometimes stage 12 is, I did what I needed to do, I accomplished the first part of the quest, but it turns out there's more work. 
So at this point, if the hero has not quite done everything they're supposed to do, accomplished everything they're supposed to accomplish, they actually go back through the 12 stages. And you sort of have to do that over and over and over again until you figure it out, which would explain sequels. So for Luke, uh, instead of going back uh, completely victorious, uh, he doesn't quite exit the extraordinary world. Uh, he just gets a medal and sort of is like, hey, I, you know, I did it. I blew up the Death Star. I'm a big hero now. And Han Solo gets a medal. Um, and Chewbacca, Chewbacca actually did not get a medal. Uh, he was overlooked, and I think people recognize that because the MTV Awards actually one year Chewbacca did. He actually got that medal, which was nice. Uh, so... You know, for Luke Skywalker, it's like a brief return, but then you're like, no, I need to know more what happens. Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, and Luke repeats the journey. So remember, stage 12, return to the ordinary world, or go back on a quest again. And that's what happens. Thanks for watching. Once again, I'm Mr. Scotland, your English teacher. I hope you enjoyed this. In the words of Chewbacca. Rrrr. <laughs>